the former real estate of the house, in person of my mother, as we become God, as we turn us hands together for the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Uh uh. And I did fight for you. Every day is good before God. And because you are of God, I think today should also be beautiful and glorious before your eyes. And that's why I say you shout hallelujah to the King of all kings. Don't let me motivate you before you shout hallelujah. Let something start you up to shout that hallelujah. You know the mystery in hallelujah. When you shout one hallelujah, I please need to make when you shout just one hallelujah, there are millions of songs inside. Just an hallelujah. Millions of songs goes along with it. Go and check your Bible in Revelation. See, there are songs inside just one hallelujah. And that's the only song they are singing in heaven. When the host of heaven shout hallelujah, songs flows in. And God stands up in his throne. And is most able to do that which man cannot do. But in this place, we commonize it. I'm not trying to call your attention, but I'm trying to let you know that God is worthy to be praised. Will somebody shout hallelujah in this place? Come and shout hallelujah! I want the precious alone to shout wonderful hallelujah. A fresh name, hallelujah. Hallelujah for the precious. Because God has made you to be a precious, not the holders. Shout hallelujah. Are the pastors here? Are the pastors here? Where are the pastors? So I want you to shout a pastoral hallelujah. A hallelujah for the pastor. Because you are the Holy Bull of God, you are representing God, you are in shepherd. Come and shout hallelujah! And the stay light around. Stay light that is going to graduate well. Stay light that is going to graduate excellently by the grace of God. Shout hallelujah!
the only thing that guarantees the brightness of our future. When you look at this God and say, I take you and I accept you as my son, as my daughter. Is that going to be unto you? Father, I am going to be my son and daughter. That makes our future great and wonderful. That makes our future glorious. That makes life work for living. I want to go sing that song once again so we get to my heart to understand it. Because he lives.
Seven seven, you read that word. Say that our heavenly father that they give us all those good things. Egg is good now, they must eat and egg party. They give us egg in place of stone, give us fish in place of serpent. God still calls them evil. My father, Baba to be me, say is evil. No matter how good he is, your own father. It's evil, no matter how good he is. I'm not saying you should go back home and say, my father, they say you are evil. To tell us that no matter how good the place can be on earth, is evil in the place of God, sir. That's why we must take God first in our lives. God first in our lives. God number one in our lives. May God give us grace in Jesus' name. I say God will give us grace in Jesus' name. You know, to know God as God, it is grace. Nobody can know God except God reveals himself to you. Go to Monday. Hundred days marathon. If God does not reveal Himself to you, you will never see God. Fast, read your Bible from Genesis to Revelation. If God does not reveal Himself to you, you are just doing them for nothing. It's like you are reading it one one one. May God help all of us in Jesus' name. I appreciate the grace given to me to stand before us this morning. 
I believe I'm part of the family. Are you? So we are one together. You see, I need to give back. I appreciate the leadership of this house, uh, the executive workers, the members, the French guys, the pastors. God bless you in Jesus' name. And I appreciate the alumni that are here as well to greet this wonderful day. I can see alumni, uh, Apostle Bro Gideon, uh, Samuel Rukewe. God bless you in Jesus' name. I can see alumni. <laughs> Jiho, Olu Yomi, Ola Yinka. God bless you, my in Jesus' name. Any other alumni there? Ah! Hey, there are alumni. Please help me usher alumni forward here, please. That's uh, my own personal alumni. <laughs> <laughs> That's a uh, mommy. I'm Molly Janet Adiola. Mommy Reviver. Mommy Peculia. God bless you, ma, in Jesus' name. Every one of us, we are important. Yes or no? Love for God in the lives. This morning, without taking much of our time, I was given 45 minutes, the text message I received. And when I got here, they said 30 minutes again. Anyway, we will use God's time. Abby? Abby? Good. God will help us in Jesus' name. The topic before us is preserve your freedom. Preserve your freedom. Preserve your freedom. You know what they mean when they say to preserve something. Preserve, to preserve means to protect, to keep something or somebody from harm or from injury. It is more than water. Well. To preserve means to keep, to protect something from harm, from injury, or to save something from decay. You know, some things that are very uh, attracted to decay. Or some things, some food at home, and you cook the rice now. After maybe one or two days, they will decay. Abi, they change everything. They test the texture. They begin to drop. Abi, that is the food. But there's a way to preserve it. Abi, not to uh, to decay, not to lose the taste. But you want to cook rice, you can wash it hmm, with salt, that some of the starch hmm, can be removed. I'm teaching you how to cook. Now, some of the starch can be removed. Now, you know the starch that stimulates those drawing to my go far. Good. Am I correct? Good. <laughs> God bless us in Jesus' name. So, you know, there are many ways we scientists that we do preserve things. They talk, they talk about shortening. Am I correct? Canning. Am I correct? Smoking. Am I correct? Huh? Frowning. Huh? Refri Refrigeration. Frizzy. Abi? Good. So, those are the ways and others that people do use to preserve something. When you use shortening, when you slaughter your animal and you dissect it, you wash it, you smash it with the salt. Oh, I do. That is shortening. Have you? Then you do not do smoking as well. Abule Motiwa. There is a city by the grace of God. Are you guys what I'm saying now? So when you salt it, you now smoke it. You know what the salt does? It gives the jams. You know, all those jams 
always like to stay where there is moist thing, where there is water. It is the water that stimulates that attracts the cave. Am I teaching science? Good. So all those things brings about the cave to something, and we have to sort it. And I, I study my Bible and say, the Bible says we have to be sorted with what? With fire. Let me see that very. We have to be sorted with fire. I was taught, you see? So my life has to be sorted. In the book of Leviticus, the Bible makes us understand when they want to kill animal to sacrifice unto God, the Bible says they should sort it as well. Come feed your sheep. Come feed your sheep. And the Bible says we should bring ourselves, present ourselves as a what? As a living sacrifice. So as I am a sacrifice unto the Lord. I should allow God to do what? To sort me and do what? And smoke me. So the dirt in my life, we do what? We vanish. You don't understand? I think germs are inside the animals. We are also carrier of germs. Microorganisms that we don't see. So when they put salt on it, it kills them. But that one will not be enough if they don't smoke it because the water is still there. The salt will be watered away. That's why they have to smoke it as well. So that the smoke, I mean the fire and the salt, they come together and they make this thing to be what? To be preserved. The dance will not have place on it again. That is how our life should be if we are to live a righteous and a life that is durable in a Christian life with God. We have to be sorted with fire. You can see that sorted with fire. He said, taking something. It's Mark chapter 9, verse 49. If you read Mark chapter 9, verse 49, you see something like being sorted with fire. When our life is sorted with fire, all those jams. Fornication is a jam. My God, upon our lives. Is that also? Anger is a jam. Rightfully is a jam. Emptiness. Those are the jams. Lies. Abusing words. There are jams in our lives that has to be sorted and smoked with fire. God will help us in Jesus' name. And we are talking about freedom. It's the state of being free. When somebody has been a Good in a place before. when somebody has been banned to a place before, then he says the person has got a freedom, this person has been loose from those fetters. It's a state of being free, it's a state of not being imprisoned because somebody in the prison is a what is a bondage. And you know, if somebody that is in the prison, I'm somebody that is in bondage that needs freedom, somebody that is not in bondage does not need freedom. Is that not so? So it's a state of not being in prison. It's a state of not being enslaved. That is freedom. It's a state of being unconstrained. Unconstrained. Being at liberty. Being licensed. Being big hours. And we go to police, they say they want to take your baby. That is freedom. God will help us in Jesus' name. And I want you to know that you can only preserve what you have. You can only preserve what you do, what you have. If you don't have freedom, you don't need to preserve any freedom. Have you? It is what you have that you preserve. And you have freedom, you preserve the freedom. When you have money, you preserve it. When you have your food, you preserve it. When you don't have it, you cannot preserve it. God will give us grace in Jesus' name. Who needs freedom? Who is the person that needs freedom? I know because of the, uh, the uh, educational arena that we have. He said, the, the stay learning. The freshers are free now. How are you going to use your freedom? You are not under your parents. You are not under your mother. No mother will say, yeah, go and wash. Some people, they are told, before they, they came from I mean, from home. It is their parent that will say, Go and bath. 
Now, it's now your turn, whether you bath or you not bath. I know you bath, tipa tipa. When you see your mates bathing. God will help us. This is the time they say we have freedom. But I want to tell us that it's a temporary freedom. I want to talk about the freedom that will bring about a life in you that will not need to, will not need to be told that do this or don't do this. The Bible says it's going to make a new covenant with us. I mean, it's going to put the spirit inside of us that we not need a teacher again to teach us do this and don't do this. Because the spirit of freedom, the spirit of Christ is inside of all. And when the spirit of Christ is in us, it's going to guide us into what we into all truth. If I see you lying, then I say you don't have the spirit of Christ in you. Hey, you are judging me. Ah, you are condemning me. It's not like that. You are condemning me. It's not condemnation. I mean, I'm only pointing you to facts. I'm only pointing you to scripture. That Christ does not lie. And if you say you possess the spirit of Christ, then you must not lie. You cannot sit on the fence. God help us in Jesus' name. What is the person that needs freedom? Because if I begin to tell you now, only the school, they will give you rules and regulations. And the people say we are not under law. But you are under, under grace. What is the grace? Christ. Christ is the person that was given to us. Free of what? Free of charge. That is grace. Grace is what we don't want. It's what we don't qualify for. Just take. I dash you. Without paying cover for it. So, I, I pity. I mean, I just marvel. When Christians are being guided by dressing code. In my school, they say dressing code. This is how you must dress. That's not dress. And they'll be, they'll be arresting Christians. A Christian. If you are a Christian indeed. The spirit of Christ in you. He must guide you that this dress is not good for you. Don't put it on. You must not be guided by the rules and regulations of the school. He tells that you are not yet saved. You are not yet a Christian. That they need to tell you you must not cheat in the example before you know that you must not cheat. It shows that you are not yet saved. Bible says we are not under law. Because if you are still operating under the law, you are back for hell. Because there's no way you can keep the whole law. How many laws of the school do I have to put in me? Me But the Spirit of God will tell me and say, this one is like today, that is, I'm preparing for this program. I say, ah, today is Valentine's Day. Are you? How also should put on red? Give me back to get a touch of red. Give me white, white to see. God is not telling me, are you being guided by day, by month, by year? No. You know, on Friday, everybody will put on native. It has been a law, it has been a routine. You two, you close your square and look for native. What that go down? What's the meaning now? You have to put them on. People will not. We will not be castigating, we will not be making just of you. Look at the drama we, we saw the other time. He said, look at the way you dress. One and one native, tipa tipa, wawa wawa nye ngo, ilo ito ko freely. Mama, I have show ko ko, onto ye ko kwe pa ma, onto ye o ko ne. Are you getting what I'm saying now? God have to tell me, say, you are putting on native. Me or the like a native. How many times people does not see me native? I have them at home, I don't wear them. You don't like it, you don't know what. How you know what I'm saying now? We must not be guided by law, but by the Spirit of God. If you are a child of God, God will help us. I say, Jesus will help us. Yes. Who is the person that did say, God? You have been free from home, good and fine. I too am free from home, but my mother cannot beat me. I'm not beating. 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 I'
was not the guy before. By Paul said, when I was young, I, when I was the type, I behave like a type, I speak like a type, I talk like a type, I do this like a type. But when I grow, I leave pains of tide aside. When I was younger than this, they have to tell me go and bath. They have to tell me do this. They have to tell me do do this. They have to tell me this and that. Before, in fact, I will see something that is that I should not do. I will go and do it. That is to say, I'm still young. But now, I'm not expected to do some certain things because they know that I have grown to know those things that are good and things that are not good. And that is the spirit that God wants to inculcate. That one God wants God want to ingest into our lives. So that we will not be guided by law, but by Christ in dwelling us. Someone that is in bondage or in slavery are the person that needs freedom. Very simple. Someone that is in bondage are those people that need freedom. And when you read the Bible in the book of the Romans chapter 8, verse 40 to 15, the Bible makes us understand that we have uh, those that are guided by the Spirit of God, they are what? They are the sons of God. Then you have not been given the spirit of fear. Have you? have not been given the spirit of fear that you should fear. Have you? But the spirit of what? Of adoption. You have not been given the spirit of bondage. Have you? That you should fear. But the spirit of adoption. Right? Abba, Father. We have two spirits in the place. Spirit of bondage and the spirit of what? Spirit of adoption. And that is the spirit of freedom. So I will talk of the spirit of bondage briefly now. Somebody that is in bondage are the people that need freedom. Number one, spirit of bondage. Number one spirit of bondage is the spirit of flesh. The spirit of what? Of flesh that brings about sin. And we have to be free from heat. Unless we are free from heat, we will be a sinner. That's just it. Because of time, I will not be talking more on that. But you know what flesh means. You know what flesh means. Another thing is the spirit of fear. Spirit of fear. When you are in the spirit of bondage, you exercise fear. Just see that you fear. When exam is coming, you are fearful. When you dream, and those dreams is very dreadful, you are fearful. You are dreaming. That means you are in the bondage. And today you shall be free in Jesus' name. Fear of future. Am I, is my life going to be oh, eh, eh, Am I going to make it in life like this? It's a spirit of bondage in one. I'm talking about, I'm still under fear. Fear to preach Christ. Hey, you know, how am I going to preach to this affair? How am I going to it shows that you are still under bondage. You are not yet saved. You need freedom. You cannot preach to your friend. Emma Sue, you cannot preach to your friends. You cannot preach to your brothers, to your sister, even to your parents. You cannot preach to your lecturer. It shows that you are still under what? Under bondage. Because the Bible says we have not been given the spirit of bondage that we should do what? That we should fear. Every time you have congregation to preach to, as I always say it, like this morning now, you know this is another congregation, Abi. I preach inside the temple this morning. It's congregation I don't, I don't call them, Abi. It's an automatic congregation. God has assigned that one for me. I should just pay my fifteen naira tap. No, I give them Christ. I give them Christ. I just pay my fifteen naira tap. No, I give them Christ. Either you believe or you don't believe. Just hear Christ. That's all. That you fear, exercise fear to preach. 
to tell people about Christ, then you are in bondage. And you have to be free this morning. And God will free you in Jesus' name. When the spirit of fighting for position inside of you, you don't fight it physically, but inside of your heart. You know the apostles, they are also fighting for position. They say, who, is, who is going to be the great? Who is going to be the header? It's a spirit of bondage inside the apostles. But when they encounter Christ, that spirit left them. And they were able to live a life that is free. God will help you in Jesus' name. Spirit of fighting and avenging for yourself. Fighting and avenging for yourself. It's a spirit of bondage. When somebody harms you, you say, Mark Bessani, you are bent for his fight for yourself. Let me tell her, let me tell him, I also have mouth. You are still in bondage. No matter how distant you recall yourself, you are still in bondage. You know, there is a spirit of a wrong prayers. When you are in bondage, you know you pray wrong prayers. Falling down fire on your enemies is a spirit of bondage in you. Falling down fires on your enemy is a spirit of bondage in you. I was in that shoe before. Ah, enemy can go put down the body. But now the Bible says, pray for your what? For your enemy. Are you? Do good for your enemy. Why are you ready fire on them? You know they told Jesus Christ. The apostle told him because the spirit of burning is inside of them. He said, "Yeah, rain down fire upon these people like the taste of Elijah." Jesus Christ said, "I have not come to destroy, but to save." Lord, ha! Ah, may that spirit enter our lives in Jesus' name. Flushing a gift of the spirit and not a fruit of the spirit is a spirit of bondage. I want to only catch the why they're running about. Hmm? Spirit of flourishing in the gift of the spirit and not in the fruit of the spirit is a spirit of what? Of bondage. The spirit of bondage. And we have to cast it out of our lives. It's not good, all of us that is roaming about like that. We are treating scripture, Bible. They don't just do that. If you go to mosque, they can never do that. They sit down. Jaman good up. I go to two jaman katoku. Egbolosiasalaman Spirit Gift of the spirit Oh I want to see I can speak in tongues. I can heal the sick. I can deliver the oppressed. I can set the captive free. And you don't get out for the fruits of the spirit. You are in bondage. Are you getting me? I'm not saying all those things are not good. But when you are laying emphasis on a minor, you are in bondage. May I never be in bondage? You know, it is easier to do signs and wonders. It is very easy. But because fruit of the spirit, and that's, that's why we are struggling with the gifts to heal the sick, to deliver the oppressed people. Pray, pray for somebody. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. That was a do that, do that. You just decree spirit, evil spirit in this one. Get out. Because you have the spirit.
spirit of the fruit of the spirit is out of you. We lay emphasis on that one. That one is very, very essential. May God help us in Jesus' name. You see, freshers, you have to work on the fruit of the spirit, not on the gift of the spirit. Don't just rush. I want to be a choir. Don't just rush. I want to be in prayer band. Don't just rush. I want to be president. Don't just rush. I want to be mommy. Don't just rush. I want to be called daddy. Hey. That one is error. Say error. The main thing is what? The fruit of the spirit. And that is the spirit of Christ. That is the spirit of freedom. Freedom. I don't want to heal the sick. But I want God to heal to heal my sickness. The greatest sickness is flesh. It doesn't move God when you eat the sick. But when you exercise the fruit of the spirit, it starts off for my for an instant ovation. That this one is my child. He said, if you do this and do that in my name, I eat the sick, I deliver your breast. He said, and you don't do the will of God. May God deliver me in Jesus' name. I can see some sister. I will, I will give you dressing coat now. You have to tell some people dressing coat this morning. I will not tell love. I will not speak about love. I'm not talking about love. But I will say this before I continue. Our sisters, some, some of them put on white. Have you? And they have to still put red inside. And the white is transparent. So when you put on white like that, you know it's transparent. You're supposed to put what? White inside. So I don't have a pack up. Am I talking sense? Have you had glass? I know you have big glass. I don't know why you are using what you are using it for. <laughs> you see white skin now? I also have glass in my room. Don't take yourself even in the mirror to hang the ceiling. Take yourself in the mirror of the word of God. Am I blessed according to my father? Can my father be pleased in the way I pray? You don't need to be told. I be broke. I don't need to be told that I should dress like this and that. If, I'm, if my mother is telling me that I should wear white inside, then I am I'm, I'm in bondage. Is that not so? If 
my my mother have to tell me pay wo in my na be adewale na mo mi sibe do you put on boxer so make sense it shows that i'm still in bondage of childishness many of us will repent this morning you have to repent it's not it's not they say no. It is all about your father and myself. My father loves me. I have to please him. And it's only me to him. So that is just, just it. We have to repent of many things. We repent every day. And the word of God is cutting up with you this morning. You have to repent here this morning before you leave this place. God will help us in Jesus' name. Let somebody read. Huh. Anytime with you, Lord. If you read Levit Leviticus chapter 25, verse 25, let's read, uh, write it down. Leviticus 25, 25, then 39, 40, then 48 to 50. They talk about redemption. You know, it is the redemption that brings about freedom. And redemption is all about somebody paying for you. You know, in the Israel, the time of the Israelite, when somebody is poor, they take the person as a ransom to somebody. They sell the person out to the person, to the somebody that is richer than you. And you'll be serving the person. So, you cannot give room for something there. That if somebody, maybe your family, in your king's man, your king's person, and those small petty petty, next of king, if the person is willing and is rich, he can, he can buy you from the person that is holding you captive. From the person that is enslaving you, that you are serving. The person that is qualified to buy one, from slavery is your king's person. And it was Sumaya kings. No, next of king. The person also must be willing. The person also must be rich. Must have the money that is enough to buy that person. I've seen it. God help you. I'm also watching time. God bless you, in Jesus' name. And do you know your king's person, your, your next of king is who? It's Jesus. In that native because it is Jesus Christ that will come and buy us from that slavery that we are in. Home. The Bible says Jesus Christ, He has, the Bible says, all oh, blessings, all spiritual blessings, I am better in Christ. He has enough money to buy us. And he's also willing. The Bible says there was a silent in heaven. And so he's going to go for us and deliver these people from the slavery. And the Bible says, eh, rejoice to heaven because the Lamb of God is worthy. So just as he was willing, he's our king's man. That's why he was called the son of man. That's why he's, you know he's a God. Not just his God. You know that. And he's also the son of man. Because he had to save man unto God. That's why he had to become man in order to save us. If I should be talking about why God become man, the reason why God has to become man is who Christ really is. Or what he passed in order to take us. Hey, it's very deep. Because of our time. Everybody is shining eyes. God will help us in Jesus' name. And do you know that he paid us. I mean, he paid for us. He bought us. Not with money. Is it money? But with what? With his blood. And you know that blood is costlier than money. One of my my tenants, I mean, I have two tenants. He said they are looking for his blood. I mean, they are looking for blood. He has one sickness like that, and he appended something like that. They are looking for blood. Say, who has this blood group? It's a group that when somebody they are looking for blood group or somebody. Somebody is, is in need of blood in the hospital. It's a real problem. And I said, we know about check in a blood group. Wow, yeah. It's like one of the sisters come on. Mother, I pray blood to me now, my daughter, sister, I brother you. Say one of the movie law. Can you full legend? Praise God. Honestly, without the 
said, I don't, don't want about a very what about a travel. <laughs> no, it wasn't willing to. I was ready to give it if the person is in need of it. But I now take it. Look at how important. Look at the barrel of blood that just has lost because of you and I. It's not a series of blood, no, it's just to so. Abi? The blood from the scope. The blood from the head. The blood from the feet. The blood from the side. Ayakata. The blood from slashes. All over him was blood. Soaked with blood in order to buy you fresher. In order to buy you pastor. In order to buy you stay life. In order to buy you an online. In order to buy all of us. Look at blood all over his body. Some of us, we can, some of us, we are folk of blood. We don't want to hear blood. We don't want to see blood. Look at what the mother of Jesus Christ passed through. Bible said, the, the, the arrow will break his mother's heart. Need that to buy the tongue on me. Take that. Don't tell about the cage. Can you imagine that? That's what we are playing with. Don't tell me I've been sharing in here. No money could buy just your money. Oh my God, I'm Money, okay, in this place, I can accept price. But in this place, hey, hey, God will help us. Ah. Something that somebody paid his blood for. May God give us understanding in Jesus' name. So, and Jesus, our rich, willing, king's man. I put hallelujah in my, in my daughter here. It's hallelujah. It's glorious. That Jesus bought me, a wretched sinner like me. The Bible says, Tell me to that. Why do I say, Get ready? Don't take the blood out of your If your mother is telling you, Don't do this, don't do that. No, the mother, if you persist in doing it, the mother can have stroke. Abi, they can force it because they are telling you are of my emancipation, my mom. That is Christ. Blood is getting out of his body for every sin we commit. Either small or big, a little lie. <sighs> God help us. Miracle cannot give one freedom. Miracle. No pastor can give you freedom. No pope can give you freedom. But this lay lamb, that's the only thing that guarantees your freedom. This lay lamb, or God will attack her. The cross in Calvary, that is Jesus Christ. That's the only one that guarantees our freedom. See, it's not by law. It's the only one that can guarantee us freedom from fear. You see, when sin is out of one's life, oh, you live a victorious life all around. God will help us in Jesus' name. When we read Exodus chapter 12, verse 1 to 7. Exodus chapter 12, 1 to 7. I'm watching our time. We are not reading it. You know, God has been taking Moses Abi, and Aaron. To take Israelites from the bondage they were having in Egypt. Is that not so? They have pardon, performed number one miracle. There was no freedom. Was that freedom? Number two miracle. There was no freedom. Number three, number four, up to number nine. Was that freedom? But God now saw that miracle cannot give one freedom, sir. No Moses can give one freedom. No Aaron can give one freedom. But Jesus, God not told them, not take a lamb of one year old, slay it, use the blood to mark your doorpost, because the day of freedom is now. And what happened? What happened? Are they delivered? They were delivered. What they have been struggling with, with diapers of miracle. But when just by setting, when the man of Calvary setting, when the man carrying the 
dawn set in, when the slain lamb set in, the freedom was approved unto them. Can Moses boast? Was it by Moses? I didn't mean it is by miracle that they did. Moses will say, I'm the one that freed you. I didn't mean it is by miracle. Adam will say, yes, I am the priest. I am the one behind Moses. We are the one that freed you. The God wants to tell them that by your miracle, you can never free these people. It is by the blood of the Lamb. Shout hallelujah. You don't understand. Stand up and shout hallelujah. Hey, the blood of Jesus. It is not by miracle. It is not by any pastor. It is not by Moses. It is not by Adam. But Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh my God, I love this. So this freedom is grace given to us by Jesus' blood. Not by Moses or Aaron or their miracles. Not by work at all that any man should boast. That is why freedom is also grace. For you to get freedom from your father's house, from our father's house, is by money. It's not money. You pay before you get admission. I beg you, Samuel. What I can pay you over there, Samuel? I beg that you say, hey, Samuel. I Samuel. We pay for it. The freedom you are celebrating today, that I'm free from my mother. So this is the love of God, Lord We paid for it. But the freedom I'm talking about, freedom from sin, the greatest enemy of our lives, we do not need to pay. It's free of tax. The only thing that God is requesting from us is just to do one to believe and walk into it. That is just it. And that's why it's different from religion. That's why it's different from any law. It's not by what you can do, but by what Christ. The blood have found and confirmed for us on the cross of Calvary. Will you accept this offer today? Will you accept that original freedom today? So that you'll be able to live a victorious life, even on campus, everywhere. No, no lecturer can threaten you. No school fees can stop you. Because you have the one that is very rich. That kiss man, Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you, it's going to set you before you leave this place. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. How to preserve the freedom. When you now read that Exodus chapter 12, verse 24 to 25, I'm rushing. Now I'm still rushing. If I should explain that Exodus 12, 1 to 7, it will take our time. And I think I paraphrased it. That it's not by miracle of Moses and Harold, but by did for us. Christ is that slave. I mean that lamb that was slain. Jesus. Oni odwa gotan tapa ni gosheni ni le ijibiti ni kanye. They have done all the good. Pharaoh did not let them go. Every pharaoh in your life today, they will see the blood of Calvary. Oh God God. When they see the blood of Calvary, you don't need to stress yourself. They will just say, oh, yeah, go. You don't need to say, fire come down upon them. No, you don't need it. The blood, one they see, it, it's automatic freedom for you. I said the power of your life. They will see free, that blood of the Lamb in Jesus' name. How to preserve the freedom? Like Exodus chapter 12, verse 24 to 25. Say they should observe it. Continuously in, in the land where they are going. What should they observe? That killing of the land. That law. They should observe it in their spirit. Not really killing ram again. But making it experiential in their spirit. That Christ has died for me. That a lamb has been slain on my behalf. That the blood has ransomed my life. That I am now free. This is a 
how to live. This is how to preserve that freedom. It's not by law. It's not by coming to church. It's not by being in choir. When somebody says, if you, want, if you don't want those boys, those guys to be running after you, just be coming to church. Be, 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 be serious with the church activity. So, oh, you still go back to them. That is law. Because it is not experiential in your heart. It is not by coming to church. It is not by joining choir. Joining Join the prayer, give me can, give me can, give me can. Join for prayer. Why talk for prayer? No matter what. Bible says we should resist the sin, the fleshly laws that war against our soul. It is your soul they are dealing with. If your heart is not correct, no matter how you do guru guru services, it's of no use. Make it real in your heart. Be conscious of it all the time. That I have been redeemed by the blood of Christ. That's how to be free. That's how to preserve the freedom. Be conscious of the fact that somebody has paid for you. That Galatians chapter 5 talks much about that. He said, verse 1. He said, be steadfast in the liberty, in the freedom. And what is the freedom? It is Christ. There is stand fast in it. How to stand fast in it? Stand fast in that Christ, not in activities. He now says in verse 2, when you read forward, down with that Galatians chapter 5, he says, If I talk of righteousness, then I'm saying that uh, Christ is of no use, profited nothing. Abi, if you read it very well. So it's not by law, but by Christ. You have to walk in the spirit. When you read verse 16 of that Galatians chapter 5, he says, Walk in the spirit. Not in flesh. That's how to maintain that freedom that I've been ascribed unto you. Avoid deceivers. Deceivers, not that I tell you that it doesn't matter. Not knowing that it, it matters a lot. Having boyfriend, they say it doesn't matter. Having girlfriend, it doesn't matter. Just to keep your company. You know, somebody just care to care for you. Just have to say that. Oh, it matters, brother and sister. You don't need this. When the time comes, God will say, this is your husband. This is your wife. It is real. He said, how can that, that can be possible? He said, I used to find a good wife and a vinegar. And I see this sister, I like her. I like vinegar. If you like it, God, God does not like it. It's of no use now. When time comes, you find your own. Not boyfriend again. But your own fiance or fiance. That's what God will help all of us in Jesus' name. You have to avoid the deceiver. Run from them. Moses ran. I mean, Joseph ran. He ran. You two run. Run on you. God will help us. Also be addicted with the war and prayers. War and prayers. Hey. Today is a Valentine's Day. I want to give us assignment. Are you going to Valentine's Day? Oh, you are going to a Valentine club party. They are there plenty. Of. I watched one on TV yesterday. They are on the ocean. They call it Sea Cruise. They want to cruise themselves on the ocean there. They are there now. Today is the real day. You want to go? You want to go? No. Very good. When you get to, take your Bible. Hmm? Jesus is my Valentine club. Jesus is my Valentine club. Forget about the person now. Are you getting me now? Forget about the person now. Say, Jesus, I want to know your love. That sense, Valentine does not have love. His love does not save. Does the love save people from sin? It doesn't save from sin. In fact, it's idolatry as I see it. Idolatry. You are worshipping Valentine. You might be like that. Error. Better. Let's be careful. All this red and white that we are putting on. Let's be careful. There's a, there's a sense. There's something we are sensing to the spirit, backing it up in the spiritual realm. We are telling them that we are part of the Valentine. God will help us. God will help us. Please, all what we are saying is very important. Word and prayers. At least read two, 
one or two chapters today. Be looking for love in the Bible. Be looking for love in the Bible. Look at the Old Testament. Look at the New Testament. Be looking for love. Love, 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 love. And you discover at the end that God is what? Is love. Jesus is love. The Bible says, as a newborn babe, besides the serving of the world, that you may grow thereby. Psalm 119, verse 45 to 56, only, 46, only may we have, I have kept your precepts. Your precepts, that is the word. The Bible also says that the word cleanses us. When you give your life to Jesus, it is the word that will cleanse us. May God give us understanding in Jesus' name. Sign of freedom. Sign of freedom. The sign that go to see that, oh, I am now free. When you read Romans chapter 6, verse 22, the number one sign is holiness. Holiness. That's the number one sign to know that I am free and you are free. Holiness inside and outside, in our heart. Not only fornication I'm talking about. When you are holiness, who is to say fornication? Now? Fornication is not all. When you are lying, hmm? it's also unholiness. Abusive word, only you die. Uh -uh. The Bible says the mouth that you used to sing unto me is the mouth that you abuse. When you are fighting, you know how to talk. You can retaliate. When they talk, you don't just take it. I must just let you know. I must just let her know. And they say there are some holy anger now. We have, we have to be very careful. God will help us. All those things that is not of God, they are on holiness. So number one sign to know that we are free is when we are holy inside and outside. When I talk about inside and outside, your heart must be clean first. It will affect your outward appearance. Powder will be of no kuni kuteni, take a casino. You know, I'm going to go back to the But God, no, but they're going to be off. You just live your life. I mean, there's some people who don't know, put on powder. They did not get them, they don't They will go back. I have not applied powder. So people are there. No, we have bush. It will affect your house and you. They can have powder. Are you getting me now? I know you have it now. And you're about to just put one. It must not be a waste. <laughs> outside and inside. Check your life. Check inside. Check outside of your life. Can Christ put on this? Can Christ live this kind of life? I should be asking myself every day. In fact, the year we vow, I will bury. The year we do, I will bury. We should be asking ourselves, can Christ do kind this kind of year do? See, just now they get punk. Say just not let get galas. Say just not let get Obama. Eh? Sister, now say just not let man. Say just to say go let it alone now. Say can Jesus not be contented with how God created him? Eh? He's just not contented. Us. He's not contented. He was contented the way God created him. You don't need to add another thing to his body. Are we? Could you know? Where's the why you know in the camp? Where's the fifteen? Go need it. I won't need it. No, we view our life in light of Christ. All this thing I don't need to tell us. When the spirit of liberty is in us, God is going to give us faith in Jesus' name. Number two, living in love. You know, Bible says in Second Timothy chapter one verse seven. Bible says we have not been given the spirit of fear, but of love. We have to in love among brethren, everybody live in love and know that God is love, Christ in love is love. Live inside Christ. Number two, live in power. Don't let anybody around you exercise the power of God in you. Use the power that Christ has deposited in you because when that spirit of freedom jump into our lives, enters our life by salvation, there's a power loaded in us. 
that we can command headache to go out. It's not like every time you just put drugs, drugs. No, you say this headache, you are not of God. Get out! You are drunk, get out of my life! This sickness, this failure, this harassment, this uh, financial breakdown, you are not of God. Get out of my life! If you do, live in power. Then, sound mind. Sound mind. Don't be shivering. Don't exercise fear. Let your heart be sound. Let your heart be sound. It is very, very important and essential. And that guarantees our freedom and maintains that freedom. That to show that we are free indeed. May God give us grace not to misuse the freedom that God has given to us in Jesus' name. There's no time again. Let's read First Peter chapter 2, verse 16. As I wind off, I'm riding off now. Praise the Lord. First Peter 2, 16. The Bible says, As free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servant of who? Of God. That Christ has come to save us and we are living by grace does not mean we should live our life anyhow. We have to center our life in the scripture. Sisters, center our lives in the scripture. Brothers, center our lives in the scripture. Let's take the Bible. Let's read the Bible always. When you read the Bible, you see that every time we are being cleansed, you see that you cry, you'll be crying. See, this thing, you see that Bible? Hey, I don't want to be left. But if you don't read it, you will not know it. And it's not everything they can talk on the pulpit. No pulpit is determined by time. God will help all of us in Jesus' name. Is there anybody here that wants to be free? This freedom is not about grace, it is not about man, it is not about what you can do. It's not about what man can do for you. It's not about what Christ has done for us on the cross of Calvary. And I want to admonish us, you fresh as this is the time to start with the Lord. To come to the altar of Christ and say, Jesus, here am I. Give me the original freedom so that I can experience freedom in all areas of my life. Because that spirit of freedom is real. It's very real, more than real. You know, people, people are in problem. People are in serious problem. In fact, there was a day, maybe, was it last month? How they, they came to call me at home. They said, they, I should come and pray for somebody. A man, he came from my... Uh, what was the name? Makodi. Who is from Makodi here? <laughs> ah, okay. The, the person was, he's working in Makodi. And in his place of work, they shot him. Can you say, One talofa, you know what I mean? They shot him immediately. He was unconscious. He doesn't know what he's doing again. Even the workers under him, they discovered that, ah, gamma is changing. Inside the office. There's no way we go. We have they are following us. The arrow, the arrow that flows in the day and the night, they are there. That's why we have to take Christ inside of our spirit. That the arrow will not penetrate us. And you may say you are, you are not sick. There's some arrow that is not for sickness. Arrow of sin is it there. Arrow of anger. Arrow of fornication. Arrow of adultery. All those arrows. Arrow of failure. Some people want to tell off our failure. We suppose a caweto are failing. I'm telling you, they are dead. Arrow me. And I went there, I pray. The, the, the wife is also dead. As I pray, God told me, say, this arrow came from their village. And God gave me a scripture, it says. When they told, when Jesus Christ told his disciples, go and take me the lamb, the ass, that I will go to ride to Jerusalem. 
Then they went to village. They go and lose him and bring him to the city. Then he's being tied to the village. They have to command to him to be loose. Praise God. Praise God. I'm telling us this. This, this, this will be nothing if you allow the spirit of freedom to come into your life. They can shoot thousands of arrows. Okay? I will pray. Thank God he was delivered. And in, after the whole prayer, the wife had to tell me and say, hey, it's true what you said, though. He was really tied to the village. He said that day, he had a, she had a dream. That I want the look at the lati you want only about at the young head in that village. They now gather around him like this. And she was trying, the wife was trying to say, Let my woman go out of this place, Daddy. Then you not can never go. Let her go. That was how she woke up. That's to tell us that people are in bondage in life. Coffee share only a sheet. You're so far wrong, you were there. Are you getting me? That you are you are so dampened with activities in the church it does not mean you will not be attached to the arrow because you don't allow the spirit of freedom force. God will help us. You shall be free in Jesus' name. You see, all those bondages you are passing through in life, bondages in the finances, in at home, in anywhere, they are a small thing for God to deal with. If you can allow God to free you from sin inside heart, I'm not saying you are not speaking in tongues. You are speaking in tongues, good and fine. Satan also speaks in tongues. Demons also speak in tongues. In fact, every everybody now speaks in tongues. If you cannot speak, you just have to get in one. Are you gonna understand? But that's not does not move God at all. But when you from sin, the spirit of holiness, spirit of freedom, enters our hearts. They will become peril to the kingdom of darkness. You don't need to pray as if, as if you, you, you don't kill somebody. You command, and they are going to depart all those evils. You live a victorious life in your environment. You become fire in wherever you are. When the spirit of freedom enters your heart, you don't need to fear again. Let them call him the dream. Fire will we, 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 we fight for you. You don't need to call him fire when it is time for any call. May God give us understanding in Jesus' name. God wants every one of us to live a life of freedom. Brothers and sisters, everyone, no matter how whom we are, honestly speaking, God wants us to live a life of freedom. You know, a life of freedom is a life of liberty. It's a life that nobody can harass you. It's a life that nobody can pressurize you. It's a life that nobody can bully you. 